Hello, the game has started. It's my opponent to go first. I have a fairly balanced rack. Now, onto an N, do I have Ophidian? Is this good? Am I confusing it with something else? And it's good. Fantastic. And look at this for a pickup. I am surely bingoing again. Is there a seven with this rack? One hasn't immediately jumped to mind, but I have quite a lot of floaters to consider. I have Stolida onto the R of Unhair. That could be blocked if opponent plays in row A. Onto a T, I would have Doyltust. Toluides and Solitude through a U. Neither of those works. Isolated through an A. Okay, well, hopefully I will have a playable bingo. Now, what about row, row A remains available? Great bingo by opponent, 86 points. And he has blocked both of the bingos I identified. So do I have something? I have pistol through the P, so I do have a bingo. But do I have one through the O? And I've been putting off looking for this because I expected opponent to go here. Well, one is not coming to mind. Pistoled a face value bingo. Can I do any any better? And what a shame there isn't a seven with this rack with Triazine taking an S. But, well, I'm still considering if there is a seven, there could be one. What if the S was in last place? No. Wow, that's a big, a big miss if there is one here. Not seeing anything with the I. Okay, well, I'm going with pistol. There may be a better bingo. Not terrible. I have the F for score, and it's fairly balanced. And I can certainly sort the vowels out with the with the F. Oof is good, and foo. I don't think there's a bingo here. Still quite a few floaters on the board. So, where do I have oof? O doesn't go in front of T, so I have... A, well, I don't even have oof because F-O is not good. Do I have something beginning F-O, a five-letter play? F-O or F-A, or indeed F-I. I don't think I do. So, wow, good scoring by opponent. I actually trail despite having only played bingos. I don't have anything with the new floaters. What about something F-O? No, neither N or nor R goes in front of the I. So I have Pharaoh. That's not great. It leaves a vowel heavy rack. Well, I have Foo down here. And although I trail, I only trail by six. So taking out floaters is probably good for me. I do have the tempo, and this rack leave is is better than anything else I've considered. I am going with this. Wow, pretty good. I have Ensnare, which I've just blocked in column 10. Insana is its anagram. Wow, this is going to be brutal if I have stopped myself from bingoing. Opponent can score quite handily in row A. And does so. So do I have anything beginning with D? No. How about the I? No. So it's Insana and Insnare. 
neither of them works with triazine. Do either play in rows F or I? No, they don't. Wow. How frustrating. What about row E? Nope, they don't play there. Foon, not good, so certainly doesn't play in column 10. So is there really no playable bingo here? What about these two letter sets? Not seeing anything. And only one point tiles. So what about Ura nines? I think that's good. And it's not. Okay. Was I confusing that with something? And your ends, that's it. And that doesn't play. I'm wondering about burning the S. Always slightly painful. But it does provide access to all of the points in triazines. So what if I played ENS? This rack leave is pretty good. That's 21 points, not very much. So what about playing AN? This is a really good five letter set. AN is pretty dismal. But I'm just not seeing a playable bingo. Well, I draw a couple of vowels. And it's Araniids through a D, so I don't have a column 15 bingo. And suddenly very few floaters on the board. I do have a slender lead. And this rack will make quite a decent number of eights. But not with the available floaters, which really are just the I and D of Oxid. So... What am I going to do here? What I really want to avoid is a succession of really low scoring plays. However, this rack leave of Sarni is absolutely immense. And there is now a bingo lane for bingos ending in S. So I am playing Moan. And I draw a U. Does that make a bingo? Denarius, column 15. Yes, it does. Which opponent blocks? Is there a 7 here? If there is, it probably plays. I trail by 28. Gosh. Great play by opponent, taking out that lane. Scenarius also good, not seeing anything beginning with odd or IO. I am going to play just UH for seven. And I draw a U. Okay, painful, but it happens. Now, unraise is good. Or is it? Well, I don't think it plays. But is there an anagram? I would have an berries through a B and urbanize. Really not sure about Unraise, but in any event, it does not play on this board. Very close game, just 21 points between us.
Good play by opponent, keeping the board tight and not providing any floaters. And he must have seen by my recent plays that I'm probably fishing for a bingo. I don't have anything beginning with I. So, I certainly need to play off the U. Where can I do that? Not seeing anywhere. Absolutely nowhere on the board for just the U. So what about AU? Wow, not seeing anything for that either. Just checking out this U as a floater. What a difference it would have made if I hadn't blocked my bingo with foo. 12 minutes on my clock, 36 tiles to come, including both blanks. And look at this, I'm 43 points behind, I'm drifting towards being a bingo behind. I'm tempted to play saw for 24. I don't think anything else is getting close to that in terms of score. And this rack leave as a four letter rack leave is pretty good. Only one eye to come. I have yerking on my rack. Does that play anywhere? Don't think so. And this probably doesn't make too many aids. It would make re-keying through an E. But I do at least have a scoring tile or a couple of scoring tiles. So I could play Yuck. I could play Yuking. Now I have re-keying. Wow. Fantastic. Re-keying for 75. And I draw the first blank and I have a small lead. The rest of the rack pretty grim. Through an L, I would have well curb. Two L's to come. And I have a ton of scoring tiles. Opponent does not play an L. That's a shame. Do I have anything ending in O? And I don't think I do. And W and U, always a bad combination, so I'm looking to play off one of them, if not both. I trail. Well, I'm looking at the floating G and N. So I have bunts, but that enables opponent to score well in column, column 15. Can't see a play parallel to rekeying. I've got nothing which goes after the I. Ten minutes on my clock. How frustrating. I thought this looked quite promising as a rack, given all the scoring tiles, but there's just nowhere to play them. The X has gone, so I could play Berg. Only 14 points. That is so tragic. Surely I can do better than that. And is there nowhere to play off W and U? Or anywhere for Curb, for that matter? Is 
Do I have anything which goes in front of UH? I don't. Through an F, I would have curfew. Well, I have the blank, so I don't want to choke the board up. And I don't really want to waste a lot of a lot of time on this play either. Well, I am going to play Berg. Four fourteen. And more more scoring tiles. And I'm going to be in trouble if opponent bingos. But the remaining tiles, not vastly bingo-y, certainly will be a ton of bingos amongst them. But there are also problem tiles in the Q and the V. And no A's and only one I. In fact, the vowels are very unbalanced. Only 7 out of 24. Wow! So the vowels on the board are at, are at a premium. But they don't go very well with the scoring tiles that I have. So is there anywhere for... Ah, oh, I have... Well, I don't. I was going to say I have wowie. Look at that opponent burns two, two of the vowels. Gosh, sequel takes an A and an S. Well, there are no A's, but there is an S and a blank to come. So I'm wondering if I should burn my blank. I trail by 29. So what if I play Cowps? 48, that's a big score. Decent rack leave, I'm giving nothing away. And I might draw the second blank. And it's not too far short of a bingo -y score. And I do trail by 29. I am going with this. Well, I don't hit the other blank, but look at this, only two vowels to come. But row J, a seven letter bingo lane for bingo's ending in S, so that could be my my downfall. And that's going to be difficult for me to block. Far doesn't take anything else apart from an S, I don't think. Possibly an N. Opponent changes. Great. So, seven tiles in the bag. Row J is the danger row. What can I do about that? Seven minutes on my clock. Really tricky. Except I could play Vom. That's quite nice. Keeping all of my lovely vowels. And the V not particularly useful for opponent. If he's got two E's and a blank, he's in a strong position to bingo somewhere on the board. But... I can't do anything about that. I think taking out row J is the priority. Vom for 13. Well, two E's and the blank are still out there. I do lead, but that lead is going to disappear if opponent bingos. I do have a balance rack, but I don't have a bingo. Wow, opponent uses the V. Rats. Okay, and takes a 30 or 40 point lead. He's left with four consonants. And he's not going to be able to go out. Is there any possibility of catching opponent? I get to have two plays. So I've got Chew It. That's 30, that would take me to 401. 
that's still a long way short. So what about Chu? 30, but with a better rack leave. Gosh, fancy that V being useful for opponents. Unbelievable. So I'm looking to score as much as possible. I trail by 46 points. Opponent's not going to get very much with his tiles. So I really need to score about 50 in two plays. Five minutes on my clock. So that's a 30-point play and a 20-point play. I don't have anything in row A, I don't think. I don't have anything which gets the W doubled. So where else can I score? I have we at the bottom here for 31 points. Where else is a decent scoring spot? Alphas is good. Four minutes on my clock. And really, where can I score with my C? Is row A really not available? So what do I have in, in column one with the C? Nothing. I'm just looking around the board for places where my C can play. And I can't see a way of getting 20 points, and that's really the, the, the issue. Can't see anything through the S, and the C doesn't play parallel. Wow, tricky position. So tweet for 30, leaving CI. I've got SIG. Or SIG, both really small scores. Two minutes on my clock, and since I know tweet is a losing play, it's worth spending that time trying to find a winning combination. Certainly if there was a row A play ending in O, then I may have hope. But I'm not seeing such a play. Not seeing anything down from UM. So that leaves CIT. I would have ETIC. Do I have a second possibility? Well, I'm I'm running out of time, so I think I will play tweet for thirty. Gosh. I felt that game slipped away from me. I trail by 16. The opponent can play Lent through the M. Where's the best spot for CI? I have SIG. I have SIT. For 10. 
And the final score, 413 for me, 425 for my opponent, a winning margin of 12 points, so well done to my opponent. Let's see what I missed. It was my opponent to go first. He played Unhair, and I got off to a fantastic start with Ophidian. But look at this, opponent comes back with Triazine, but also had Notarize through the O. I rack, and wow, look at that, Pistoled was the best available. I was sure there was something better. Opponent plays Oxid, and now I trail. I open with two bingos and I trail, and I play Foo for 25. And I like that, I could have got seven more points with Far, but with a far inferior rack leave. Opponent plays Amma, and here we, here we are. I have a fabulous rack. I have seven letter bingos, and I can't see anywhere for them. <gasps> okay, I6. Insaner plays beginning underneath the H of Unhair. Wow. And Unarisen is the anagram of Anurins. So there were two bingos available there, but Insaner, that's the painful one. And I play Anne instead. Opponent plays Alf. And no missed bingo here, but sometimes you only get one shot. And I play Moan to leave a great rack leave. Opponent plays OE, blocking Denarius. And I, well, I could have still played Denarius as a non-bingo for 30. Maybe I should, I don't know. Certainly playing off the U and keeping Sarni. Sarni is a fantastic six-letter set, so I don't think there's anything wrong with my play. Opponent plays Dine. And this is where I play Saw for 24, and I think that's the right balance. Sarni wrecks the rack. Saw scores six fewer points, but retains Rain, and Rain is is more than six points better than you. You must be worth about minus four. And Rain, I would say, is positive and must be worth about plus six or seven. So certainly a more than six point difference. Opponent's rap plays Juve, and that's fantastic. I get right back into the game with rekeying, but J8, Yerking was available because of Oily. Wow, I did not have my Scrabble head on but at least I, I got one bingo down to take the lead. Opponent plays Yeg, which of course Yerking would not have provided. And now I'm in a tricky spot. I trail and I have a, an awkward rack. J, nine, U, U and Orf, okay. And I play Berg, 14, only six fewer points and I'm burning the U, so not a huge difference between those plays. But I am placing a U underneath a double word square with a Q unplayed. Opponent plays sequel. I play Calps and look at that, I could have played Scalp for eight more points. And A3, I could have played Wept, retaining the blank. And look at that, opponent has no S or blank. But certainly Scalp would have been significantly better than Calps. And this is where opponent changes. He has four Ts, so decent choice. I now lead. I lead. There are seven tiles in the bag. I play Vom. N, 10, Olive. Well, my concern is row J as a seven-letter bingo lane ending in S, with an S and a blank to come. And I'm not sure any of these plays really address that danger, which I was endeavouring to do with this play. And overbet's the only bingo. Wow. OK, so here we go. I trail by 46. Is there a winning out sequence? Well, I don't think so. Let me have a look to see what the examiner thinks. So I played 
Now, interesting. Winning 100% of the time. Examiner thinks there is a win. J14. TE. Leaving. C double E I T W. Why is that a winning play? I'm baffled. Do let me know below if you can see why that's winning. T E in this spot. What is that achieving? Absolutely no idea. Unless opponent is stuck with the R. But he's not because he could play Ret. So, okay, I'm baffled. Do let me know in the comments below. So I play Tweet. Opponent plays Lent. And now K4, I play Sit. Let me just make sure that this is performing as it should do. It should show that this is 0% winning chances. Yeah, so, wow, how interesting. TE. And finally, well, the opponent's got deer here, so I certainly wasn't blocking a single R spot. Well, I went out with, with sit, so that was the end of the game. And I lose by, by 12, so really super tight game. And I definitely had chances to win. I missed Insana, which was a, a bad miss in, in the early part of the game. And I think Scout would have been a lot better than than Kaups. Vom losing, I don't know. I think that may be just an unfortunate. V is not usually the, the, the most useful floater in a consonant-heavy bag. So many thanks to my opponent for a great battle. I hope you enjoyed watching that game. And before we leave ISC for today... Yesterday's game against Ganesh, Examiner was not working. Examiner is back working now. So let's review that game. This was a special game to mark the 1000th Dweebovision video. And I was playing against Ganesh from Malaysia, who is one of the very best players in the world. And it was... Me to go first and I changed and I could have got 12 for knew it. Well, I think changing is is better. Opponent plays Fogey. And I miss a bingo. I miss Fengite. Very difficult one to see. And play play Hep. What does opponent do here? Opponent played Fugio. And I changed again with this rack. Okay. Well, I think by changing I can keep E-I-N-T or A-E-I-N-T, which is pretty good. Opponent plays Razor. And now I play Fanjet for 44, which I was pleased to see. But I think Ganesh was even more pleased to see it because he's got a Triple, triple in bar flies, and I've got a horrendous rack, and I trail by a lot. So I play them, and look at this, another bingo for, for Ganesh. My rack, and I play Buddy for 38. Ganesh plays Tav. This another missed bingo ordnance. Tricky one to see, but a fairly common word. And I play acorn instead. And I trail by 180. Rakesh. Ganesh has homaged. And now my rack, all one pointers. Very tricky to deal with because one point racks are bingoy racks and it's difficult to score. And you don't want to wreck the rack. Ganesh plays airily. And I play Aru for 37, so I trail by 200. 19 tiles to come. Ganesh plays Pit. Kenty for 60, D1. Wow, that would have been a, a great score. 
Instead, I play coy for 30, so that was certainly suboptimal. Ganesh plays Trin. And now I play NE for 10, and not much, not terribly much more on offer. Ganesh plays Lad. And now I have the opportunity to get A bingo down, and I play Acetone for 80. I could have got one more point in the same spot for Ecotone. But look at this. Ganesh is able to go out with Exalters for 98 and mop up a huge amount in count back. So he runs out a winner with a score of nearly 600 points. So absolutely tremendous score and game by one of the, the very best exponents of the game. So I hope you enjoyed that somewhat delayed analysis and I will see you next time. What's the longest word you've ever played? Probably 10 letters long. I might have made a longer one by sticking letters onto the end of of an existing word, but I don't have a particularly strong memory about long words. If you could change any of the rules of Scrabble, what would you change and why? I would change the penalty for arriving late in a tournament. What happens is at a tournament is the game starts and if your opponent is not there, his clock is started and his clock runs down until he shows up. But your your opponent's time is also your time. So when your opponent's clock is running down, you're also missing out on thinking time. So you are being punished for something that your opponent is, is doing. And I think that's wrong. I would much rather that... Well, sorry, the other point about arriving late is that opponent can arrive 20 minutes late and sit down, have only five minutes left on his clock and play, effectively play a blitz game and win. And you've had 20 minutes of not knowing whether you're going to have a game or not. So my proposed alternative is that the game is forfeited if your opponent is five minutes late. And also that in addition to his clock being started, he loses he or she should lose 20 points for every minute or part minute that they're late. So that's a change I would make. I would also change the overtime rule. At the moment, you lose 10 minutes, 10 points for every minute you go overtime. I would keep that rule, but I would say that if you go one minute overtime, yeah, at the one minute mark, you should forfeit the game. I mean, Scrabble is meant to be played to clocks. So I would like to see forfeiture after one minute. Um, I don't actually know the current rules in respect of either of those things, so it's possible they could have they could have changed, but I don't think they are as I've suggested I would like them to be. Why don't you ever move the tiles around in your rack or place some on the board tentatively, like I E S T in your second turn? Well, I solve anagrams using a card box and those anagrams always present in alphabetical order. The initial letter set is in alphabetical order so that's what I'm used to seeing when I solve anagrams and I'm trying to replicate that situation with the tiles on my rack and since anagramming is done subconsciously I think that process is facilitated if I am if I'm making my letters appear in the same way as they appear in the card box. And the reason I don't place tiles on the board tentatively is that I wouldn't do so in a face-to-face -face game because it would tell my opponent some of the tiles that I have. And what I'm trying to do in these online games is to replicate as best as I can what it's like to play in a tournament game. What's the significance of Zapateo99 when your channel is called Dweebervision? Well, the significance of it is that it just demonstrates my stupidity. I, I, I don't know how to get rid of Zapatio 99. I, I, I would like it to read Dweebervision and I don't know how to do it and I can't be bothered investigating it to, to find out exactly how to do that. So if anybody knows, please do tell me and I'll make that change. What is your least favourite tile? Well, I, I don't have a, a love-hate relationship with any tiles. I view them all neutrally. I think the tile I find hardest to deal with is the V because I sort of have a natural 
thought, well, the V isn't a bingo tile, I need to play it. But I think the V probably deserves a bit more love because it does feature in a number of bingos and it can be a useful scoring tile. So I think I probably have a natural in inclination to play it too quickly rather than to consider options which involve it staying on my rack. I really enjoyed your book, How to Win at Scrabble, co-authored with Andrew Fisher and published in 2004. Is there anything you'd change in that book now? Yes, there's a section in the book which deals with learning words, and I think I would basically remove that and just replace it with how to use a card box, because I think learning words by card box is just easily the most efficient way to learn words and you may have a preference in terms of learning words some other way but it, it's not going to be as efficient there's really only one pony in town and that's card boxing when it comes to learning words and the other thing I would change is I would update the the tile values I think the e in the book is valued at plus two and currently it's only worth 0 0.5 and there are quite a few letter value changes there. Letters will change in value as new words come into the dictionary. So the Q's, the Q's value will go up because of QI. And well, that's the only example I can think of. But anyway, if you want to know what the current values are, the place to go to is cross tables. And you can just type in a single letter there and it will show its value. What has been your most memorable moments relating to the Dweebervision channel? Well, there's a few here. Certainly the channel initially going live. YouTube changed its policy and allowed videos longer than 10 minutes to, to, to be sent to the channel and hosted on the, on the website. So when that happened, I was quite keen to set up the channel and I recorded 10 videos because I wanted there to be more than one video when I started. And I was really worried that while I was recording those 10 videos, somebody else would have a similar idea and put a video video up and I would be seen as being just a, a copycat channel. And I really didn't want that to happen because I wanted to be a, a, the pioneer in this type of video. So that was quite a momentous moment, the channel going live and being the first with this sort of video. I think the second memorable point was when I introduced videos such, a, such that you could actually see me. For the first few hundred videos on the channel, you could see the board and you could hear my voice, but you couldn't see my face. And I think if you're putting something like this up on YouTube, I think it really does need you to be able to see the person who's speaking in the sense that that's what most people who are watching would would want to see. So it was quite good when I I learned how to incorporate that into into the videos. The third memorable moment was having a guest commentator. I always wanted and intended the channel to have a variety of presenters and I did approach many people asking them if they were interested and I got flat refusals all round. The one person who did step up to the plate was Brian Gallaback and apologies if I've, if I've mispronounced your name, but you produced a number of absolutely fantastic videos for the channel. It was great to have a, a different perspective and they were also using the American dictionary. So it was also good to have that alternative perspective as well. So thank you very much, Brian, for your contribution to the channel. The other, the next point I would mention is tournament vlogs. Although twice a week I put up videos of me playing Scrabble. Also when I attend Scrabble tournaments, on occasion I make vlogs of those, of those tournaments. And I particularly enjoy making them. And given that one of the goals of the channel is to recruit people to the tournament scene, I think actually having videos which give some flavor of the tournaments are useful. So I was delighted to start having those on my channel. And the final memorable moment, I think, was my recent collaboration with Kenji, a fellow YouTuber in which we played a game and edited it afterwards so that you could see each of our comments on our respective moves. So it required quite a lot of time and technical skills to actually put those videos together. But I think the end product was really appreciated by people who watched the video. What are your thoughts on multiplayer Scrabble with three or four people? 
I think it's an abomination. How much time do you devote to word study and how do you fit it into your days? Probably one to two hours a day and when I was commuting into London for work, I would study words on the train into London and back out in the evening and that probably constituted most of my study time so it fitted very well into my daily life. Are there any skills, words or anything else you've learned from Scrabble that have been useful in other parts of your life? Well, I think keeping a cool head under pressure, uh, managing your emotions and also th the point that if you work hard at something, you can get better at it. And I think that's, that's probably something which is uh, applicable across many areas of life. Looking at the ABSP Majors page, I feel you should have won more major tournaments. Do you agree? And what is your most disappointing almost win? Well, I don't enter many majors tournaments, which may explain why I don't win as many as the questioner thought I, I may have done. And that's just the way it is. I think one of the majors tournaments is free challenge and I don't play free challenge tournaments. Another, I think, had only 11 games over the weekend, which wasn't really enough for the money for the entry fee. And I think the other one of one or two of the other majors, they're three day events, August bank holiday. And sometimes the accommodation of the food aren't aren't fantastic. So I just doesn't that doesn't strongly appeal to me. I think the uh, the point about a major is that I, I'll enter if I like the title and I like the master's title and I like the NSC title, but the other titles don't really mean as much to me. And certainly add, adding another major to my list also just as a major doesn't, doesn't really do it for me. I mean, it's Scrabble, which I love, and I particularly love one-day tournaments and playing overseas, so that's the reason I... I don't have more majors racked up. What is my most disappointing almost win? Well, as I say, the NSC, the National Scrabble Championship, is a tournament which does, which is a title I'd like to have. I've never won it, but I have come second on three occasions. So those are all disappointing almost wins, but maybe next year. What is your all-time favourite game you've played on this channel? Well, alas, I don't have one. I have a really poor memory for games and both on the channel and generally. So I don't have great memories of specific games. But I think recently there was an extraordinary game in which I could have won if I'd played ejected on the last move. And what's extraordinary about that game is that I was 170 points behind in the early stages. The game looked completely lost and suddenly I got back into the game and could have won so i think that would have been that would have been quite a memorable game if i'd managed to find the word ejected but i didn't and i think the thing about scrabble is one reason why games aren't memorable is that in general just so many of the games are consistently high quality and that's not a comment on me or my opponents it's it's really a comment on on the game itself the game itself just very rarely delivers boring games. They, sometimes the scores are massively in favour of one person or the other, but even if that is the case, there is still intrinsic interest in every single move. So I generally find that that the games are really, really enjoyable, and therefore it's not the case that specific ones stand out in my mind. And I know quite often at the end of the game I say, wow, what an epic game, and it might sound slightly hyperbolic but it is only slightly i those generally are my my sentiments how would you rank the importance of word knowledge versus strategic ability in rough percentage terms in becoming a top scrabble player i would say in terms of becoming a top player word knowledge is massively more important and the vast majority of time that top players spend on the game is learning words and that's flat out the case so I think the strategic side of Scrabble not very difficult and you can learn it but with this caveat 
there is a huge difference between somebody like me, who is a top 100 player in the world, I'm currently ranked 93, and anybody in the top 10. And given that I've studied all the words, the difference between my my ranking and somebody who's in the top 10 cannot be accounted for by word knowledge and is accounted for by by other factors, by board vision and skills relating to the board and strategy. So having dismissed strategy, what I'm really saying is that as a recommendation to, to weaker players, what to focus on would be words, but there is something almost voodoo-like amongst the very top players in terms of, of what they do strategically they're not playing words i haven't heard of but the net effect so often is that they win the game and i lose and if you try and copy the really top players you you, you might watch a game and see ah oh, they're playing tightly i'll play tight and then you play tight and all that happens is you, that you end up blocking your own bingo so it's very difficult to actually copy the very top players and have anything like the same results so they they clearly have something or some some board vision or awareness which is giving them an edge and which definitely falls into the category of strategy rather than word knowledge. Is there any cool strategic play you are most fond of, like a setup or something? No, I'm very much just word knowledge based and basic solid strategy and winning by scoring more points rather than doing anything fancy. So alas, I don't have anything great in response to that. Do you have any particular letter or combination where you struggle to recognise or learn words more than others? Probably just the, the five vowel eights. There's something which is when you've got a whole bunch of vowels on your rack, it makes it very difficult to to rearrange them in your head or to prompt a response from your subconscious as to words. And I think consonants have more, more character than, than vowels. And it's I just find it difficult to find five vowel eights. And I, I think that's probably fairly universal. I did devise a a system which I set out in the, the book, which Andrew Fisher and I co-authored, which was a method to, to learn when you had a set of five vowels, whether there was a bingo there. If you if you know a set of letters makes a bingo, you can generally find it. But if you don't know, then sometimes you find it and sometimes you don't. So I devised this mechan mechanism for, or method for identifying when you have a set of five vowels, do they make, which, sorry, the methodology was when you have a set of five vowels, which three consonants go to make a five vowel eight. But it's quite a complicated system and it requires regular refreshment to keep it current and I've let it lapse. But I hope to uh, return to that and get it up, up to date in my mind at, at some point in the future, but it's not something I'm planning to do imminently. If you could play potentially a non-serious game of Scrabble over dinner and a glass of wine, always a good idea, with anyone alive or dead, who would it be? Well, good question. Um, I, I think probably Alfred Butts. I keep reading in respect of him that, well, he invented this game. It was made, meant to be a family pastime. He never envisaged that it would be a popular tournament game. And, well, I'd just like to get his take on it because if I invented something and as a bit of fun and people started taking it seriously, I'd be absolutely uh, delighted and uh, a a excited by that. So it'd be nice to get his, his, his take on that. When am I going to get to play against the great Dweeber Vision? Well, there are two ways to be my opponent on, on Dweeber Vision. One is to support the channel via Patreon, and the link is below. And the channel can be supported from $1 a month. And one of the benefits of being a, a patron of the channel is that you are guaranteed that you can play me in a game. And you contact me privately via the Patreon site and we can arrange a mutually convenient time to play. And the second way to be my opponent on Dweaver Vision is to get lucky. I go on to ISC generally the weekends between two and three o'clock and send a general seek out to anybody with a rating of 1400 or above. And whoever responds fastest is my opponent for that day. 
who, well, the question is, where your inspirations in Scrabble land on? Now, I'm interpreting that question to mean who are or were your inspirations in Scrabble. And certainly starting out, my inspirations were Phil Appleby, who was my local opponent, and Mark Nyman, who introduced me to him. They were both two of the top players of the day. And I saw their level of play, and that was the level of play I aspired to be. I didn't know if I was going to ever be as good as them, but it's you know they were the benchmark and they were my motivation to improve. Now, moving on to to later on, I, I generally perceived there to be a plateau of top players in the world, all of whom were playing at a similar level, and really who won in matches between them was really down to luck. But then along came Nigel Richards, and he just massively raised the bar, and that was just so exciting that it was possible to play the game so much better than the top players of the day. So although I will never be anything like as good as Nigel, he is there as as, as an inspiration to improve. The, the question isn't, can I be as good as Nigel, but to what extent can I close the gap between me and him, if at all? Any specific players you just can't get too many matches from, and I understand from that, players who you don't win against very often. Well, I would say anybody who's in the, in, in the top 10 is playing at a significantly higher level than than I am. And I, I would say Nigel, Ganesh, David Eldar, Brett Smitherum from this country, they are all much better than me and will consistently win the majority of games that I play against them. But it's part of the, the, the beauty of Scrabble that you can play against somebody significantly better than you and beat them due to luck. So it's always a pleasure to play against any of these truly great players. Shortcomings you may have in the game and how you try to handle them. Well, I mistake I make mistakes every game, as indeed the post-match analysis shows. So I aspire not to make mistakes, but um, I do make them. And what I believe to be the case is that my mistakes aren't really categorizable. If you could say your mistakes are of this particular type, then you can do something about that. If you're missing words, then you can learn more words. But I find that the mistakes I make are, uh, aren't are really capable of being categorised. So although I try and learn from them, it's it's hard to have any, any major programme of addressing those mistakes, which, which I you know, have any hope would be successful. So really, I just try and play my best and concentrate. And I sort of know I'll make mistakes, but um, I hope that they, they won't cost me the game. And sometimes they do. Final question. Your tricks to handle the chance of burnout. Well, burnout is not an issue for me because I genuinely find the game pleasurable and any pressure that is part of the game just adds to the adds to the pleasure and I really don't have a, an issue with, with with burnout. There's nothing negative about the game of Scrabble, which is going to cause me to to want to turn my back on the game. But if you if you do find the game stressful, you're yourself or you're angry with yourself because luck has gone against you or you've made mistakes, my advice would be to not care about losing, don't care about losing and care a lot about winning. So. The caring about winning means you're, you're learning words, you're analysing your games and you're learning from your mistakes. And the don't care about losing is, is just that. Don't, don't beat yourself up when you lose a game, even when it's entirely your fault and you've been an idiot and you've made the dumbest mistake imaginable. Don't, don't beat yourself up. I mean, it's, it's ancient history and, um, you know, it's only Scrabble. So that is the, the, the end of the Q&A. So I think it's been... Well, hopefully you you have found it interesting. I think it was a great suggestion and it's something quite different for this channel and therefore it's a good way of marking such a milestone event as Dweebovision 1000. Mm -hmm.